today I'm going to show you how I built CyberJeff, a Slack app that helps me automate things that I would otherwise have to do manually for members of our Slack channel. If you're not already in our Slack, you should join with a link in the description. It's a great way to communicate, and you can chat with me personally, along with a bunch of other developers working on a similar stack. If you're already a pro member, you should be summoned by Cyber Jeff. He's a faster and more reliable version of me. When you first join the Slack channel, he'll check to see if your email has a matching account in the Firestore database with pro status. If there's a match, he'll invite you to our pro channel and tell you how to redeem a sticker and t-shirt. Now, this is a very personalized Slack app for my business needs, but in today's video, I want to show you how to build your own from scratch. If you're new here, like and subscribe and check out the full write-up on Fireship.io. Now, before you start building a Slack app, you should start by outlining your actual use case because their API is absolutely massive. It allows you to automate things within the workspace, create chatbots, interactive UI elements, and a whole bunch of other things. But if you're a developer, there are two main reasons you would build a Slack app in the first place. Companies already using Slack may want to enhance some sort of internal process or communication flow. That's essentially what CyberJeff is. It's mostly an automation tool, but also serves as our new AI overlord on Slack. The other reason you might want to build a Slack app is to build a service to be consumed by other Slack users. Slack has a public directory for third-party apps. All you have to do is build something useful, market it well, and you'll have enterprise clients throwing money at it in no time. Let's go ahead and get started. You'll need two things for this project. You'll need some kind of Slack workspace that you have admin access to, and then we'll be using Firebase as our serverless backend with cloud functions. But feel free to use whatever Node.js backend you prefer. The first thing we'll do is create a new Slack app. You can do this from the Slack API homepage, and you'll see a big button there to create a new app. Now, like I said before, the API is massive, so you kind of need to know what you're building before you get started. Some apps might want to listen and react to events that happen within the workspace, while others might want to fetch or post information into it, like post new messages and things like that. Or in our case, a combination of both. We want our server to listen to the Slack event of when a new user is added to a channel, and then react to it by posting a new message into the Slack workspace. If you're not sure which API you actually need, I would highly recommend following this flowchart provided by Slack. Now getting back to the Slack admin panel, let's enable events. Events are essentially outbound webhooks that allow you to listen to events that happen within the Slack workspace or events triggered by a bot. In our case, we only care about one event, which is the member join channel event. We simply select that from the dropdown, and then you'll notice it's asking us for a request URL. This URL will be an HTTP Firebase Cloud function. But before we can use it, we need to verify that we actually own it with Slack. So you can see right now it's currently unverified. Let's go ahead and open up VS Code, and then we'll open a terminal session and run Firebase init functions. I'll be using the TypeScript flavor for this video to show you some of the caveats there, but feel free to use vanilla JavaScript if you prefer. Now let's go ahead and get our endpoint verified. All we need is an HTTP cloud function. This function will receive a challenge parameter from the request body sent by Slack. We simply receive the challenge parameter and then send it back as the response. Now let's go back to the terminal and run Firebase deploy. After a minute or so, that should deploy the function and give us back our function's URL. Go ahead and copy and paste that value as the Slack request URL. You should immediately get a green check mark. So now that the endpoint is verified, it's time to build something useful. We need to make sure that our app is fully secure, and there's a couple of steps involved in that depending on the types of APIs that you plan on using. Now back to the terminal for our cloud function, we'll install the Slack web API along with Google Cloud Pub Sub, and I'll explain why that's needed in a few minutes. Slack provides a big mono repo with a bunch of different packages. The web API is used if you want to post messages into Slack or modify things in the workspace. In order to use it in a workspace, we need to authenticate it with an OAuth token. The token is unique to the workspace and not the app itself, so each workspace that has this app installed will have a different OAuth token. Since this is a private app installed in a single workspace, we'll simply install it, which will take us directly to the OAuth tokens for the team. You'll want to copy this value and then head over to the command line once again, and we'll set it up as an environment variable in the cloud functions environment. By running Firebase functions config set slack.token equals our OAuth token. And that's the only credential you need for the Slack web API. But our app is also listening to incoming events from Slack. So we need a way to verify that those requests are actually legitimate because it's possible for a hacker to send fake requests to our cloud function URL. We can prevent that by going to the basic information page and grabbing our signing secret. We'll also use the Firebase functions config set command to add this as an environment variable. 
Now, validating the signing secret from scratch is kind of a pain, so I actually put together a dedicated snippet on Fireship.io just for this purpose. Slack has an events API package that can do some of this for you automatically, but it doesn't really work well in a serverless environment. All we have to do is perform timing safe string comparison using double hash message authentication code, which of course is something that every programmer should know how to do with their eyes closed. You'll see a more detailed description in the snippet, but basically we're taking our signing secret and then comparing it to a signature that Slack provides in the header. If the final values match, then we know we have a valid request, otherwise we reject it. Now let's get on with the actual code implementation of the Slack app. We'll go ahead and import the web client from Slack Web API, then we'll initialize the client using the Slack token that we saved to the functions environment. Then we'll also instantiate Google PubSub here. So let me take a second to explain why we need PubSub. If you're not familiar with it, it's a service that allows you to pass messages between different Google Cloud services. So it's very similar to HTTP, but it's fully secure within the Google Cloud infrastructure. Now the Slack API requires that their initial request is responded to within 3000 milliseconds or three seconds. If you don't respond within that time, you'll get a timeout error and then Slack will try to retry that same endpoint. If your app has a long running backend process, like it makes API requests to some other API, then you'll need to queue up some type of background job to handle that work outside of the 3000 millisecond limitation. And that's exactly what our PubSub function will do. So that means the only responsibility of the HTTP function is to verify the signature and then queue up the background job. We can do that by stringifying the initial request body, converting it to a buffer, then using the PubSub client to publish to a specific topic using that buffer. So essentially what this does is it takes the request body and then passes it off to a PubSub function that we can handle in the next step. And lastly, make sure to send a response to Slack with a 200 status code. So what we've done here is passed off all the heavy lifting to a PubSub function, which has no time limitation, so feel free to take as long as you want to handle it. We can set up the cloud function, making sure to point to the same topic that we publish to. The onPublish callback will give us access to the message, which has the same data contained in the original request body. The data that's available here depends entirely on the type of event that Stripe has sent to your backend. You'll need to mostly reference the Stripe API docs because even though we're in TypeScript, it doesn't provide typings for the actual response data types. When a new user is added to a channel, it will give us an event which we can access on the message JSON. And then we can grab the user and the channel from that event. So that gives us a user ID and a channel ID from Slack. In this implementation, we only want to run the code if the user is being added to the general channel for the first time. If that's not the case, we can throw an error or just return null from the function. Now, the first thing we wanna do is take that user ID and grab the full user profile, which will contain the email address and display name of that user on Slack. We can do that by making a request with bot users profile get. That will give us a web API response and the actual data we want is on the result profile. And that's an unknown type, so we'll go ahead and cast it to any so we can destructure the properties on it. Now, before we go any further, we'll need to make sure that our bot has the proper permission to read a user's profile. You can set up permissions or scopes for your bot on the admin area for the Slack app. You'll want to use the principle of least privilege here and only grant access to the actual operations that your bot needs to do its job. Now that we have the user's email address, we could make a query to Firestore to grab that actual user record from the database, but I think we should just stick to the Slack API for this demo. We'll go ahead and invite that user to a new channel, then have the bot send them a direct message with some text that welcomes them to the new channel. And that's basically all there is to it. We now have a fast and secure serverless backend for building our Slack app. But there's a lot more we can do beyond this simple use case. If you want to build a full-blown conversational bot, consider using something like Dialogflow. It makes it super easy to build bots that have human-like conversations, similar to the Google Assistant or Alexa and you can add it to your Slack channel with just a few button clicks. And if you want to make the responses from the app more interactive with buttons and images and things like that, check out BlockKit. It's a UI framework specifically for Slack. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe and consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io. You'll get access to Cyber Jeff, who can only be used by pro members, but more importantly, you'll get access to a whole bunch of advanced content. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.